Good morning, Gretchen. What's that? Nuclear energy. Nuclear energy. I didn't talk about nuclear energy, right? Nope. Oh, so what is nuclear energy? I wrote down this formula. Oh, I know. It's energy from the nucleus. They split it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, we covered this in chemistry, right? You remember it? Yeah. And the energy and just being the from the nucleus 20 push -ups. is equal <laughs> to energy contained in an atom is equal to the mass of that atom times the speed of light squared. So there's a lot of energy. Now they don't get all of that energy out. <laughs> when they split an atom in half, there's a certain amount of, lo of mass loss. So, so in nuclear fission, there's a certain amount of mass that's lost, and that's the energy that they get. And it's turned into what? A light <laughs> yes. and yes. sound sometimes. Right. Right. Yeah. Some of it like uh, might be turned into sound. Bomb. Most of it's turned into Electric. kinetic energy Electric. of a proton or a neutron and into light. And it's the light energy that they actually take and that becomes radiant energy that's absorbed into a water tank that turns it into steam and turns a turbine. So we convert it first from it creates both kinetic energy in the, some of the particles that are given off, plus the split atom. Both, all that has receives kinetic energy, and you get ionization, electrons going off, so beta beta energy. You get heat beta particles energy too, right? What? You get thermal energy too. Yeah, and thermal energy. Yeah. Yeah, because that light hits other atoms, it makes them move faster, and it gets hot. And then that's what heats up the water. And so now the water has that thermal energy, so the particles in the water move faster. And eventually it gets hot enough to become a gas, and that's what is used to turn a turbine, converting it from one form of mechanical energy, which is molecular motion of the water molecules. And those get turns a turbine, which turns a generator, it converts it into electrical, electrical energy. And then from electrical energy it goes to your house, and it's used to run the blender, the microwave, the TV, the stereo, and so forth. So that is nuclear energy. We won't go into the complexities of how nuclear energy works. We covered it in more detail earlier in the semester. But there won't be anything too detailed on the test. You just need to know what it is, which you already kind of know. So we're going to move on into momentum. What is momentum? It's velocity times mass. Yes. If your velocity is high, and your mass is low, then you have a good momentum. If your mass is high and your velocity is low, right, right, right. It's right. the uh, so so, so the desire momentum. To keep the symbol for momentum is p. Yes. Equals m v. Yes. Yes. Now, if you knew calculus, you know that is d d e d t of which is. Why do we need to know this is calculus? <laughs> because you, you want to know that they're related. So this is, E stands for energy. Yeah. So that's so I could write this this way. Don't use any lambda or whatnot. Fine. Delta just means the change in energy over the change in time. Okay. And we just let oh. the D just symbolizes letting that change go to virtually zero. So we really, really tiny, infinitesimally small changes is what a derivative is. Okay, and so that's um, one half, or well, we could just write it as two over m delta b delta t, Yikes. which is the change in velocity squared. Sorry, I forgot the square part. So it's actually that, the two's on the outside. Okay, so when you take a derivative that becomes, this two comes down to here, it becomes two. So now it's just delta V, delta T, and if we make it real small, we sum all those up, we get um, V, right? If we change this back to just V. And it's not the second derivative, I'm sorry. 
What's that? <laughs> well, you're not really taking calculus, but I'm just trying to say where momentum comes from. It is, if you were to graph energy, it would be, so, so you have some energy, we haven't really covered, but say we have a constant, have a, energy's increasing, the momentum would be constant, because it's just the slope of the line. There's another way of putting it. If you have a parabolic energy, the momentum will become a straight line. It's just whatever the slope is at any given point. So momentum would be zero when the energy is constant. That, that's just to kind of motivate mathematically what we're doing. Wow. So energy and momentum are related. That's the main thing I want to communicate to you, that they're related. And you remember we have the law of conservation of energy? Yes, we do. You can't create energy and you can't destroy energy. The energy at the beginning is the same as the energy at the end for a system. Okay? Provided you make your system sufficiently large enough. Momentum the same way. The momentum, momentum you have at the beginning is equal to the momentum you have at the end. Okay? So... Yes, I'm going to get those balls. Because these are Newton's, Newton's balls. And they demonstrate momentum. Yeah, now one more of them is off. Huh? Yeah, I know one more, right? Where? So, when I pull this back, I'm giving the ball a certain amount of energy. It has no momentum. Potential energy. Right, potential energy. And it converts it. And where does it reach its maximum kinetic energy? At the bottom, right? Yeah, when it hits strikes the speed. Right. And so momentum is the derivative not of potential energy, but of kinetic energy. And so it's related to kinetic energy. If something yeah. only has potential energy, it yeah, has momentum. no momentum. Yeah. Momentum. So, what happens? When I drop this ball and it connects here with the other balls, all the momentum from this ball actually gets transferred through each one of these and out the other side. And that and ball has. Sound. The same, well, obviously there's friction and things. We're losing some energy along the way. But on that very first swing, that ball that moves on the other side has almost exactly the same momentum as the ball that hit to begin with. And the same energy, same kinetic energy. The instant after that energy, the instant after just a mere instant, it takes less than a second, less than a tenth of a second for it to transfer that energy through those balls. So that's why it appears to be almost instantaneous. It's a very fast transfer of energy through the balls and out the other side. Wow. So I was going to justify when I was talking about light. Well, light energy, the units on energy is kilograms for what? Kilogram meters per second squared. Second squared. Yes. Yeah, meters. Oh, it's got to have meters squared too, right? Yep. Right? Yeah. If it doesn't, we got a problem. So those are the units. And I said, well, light has energy. Light is energy, but it doesn't have any mass. How can it have kilograms in its units? Well, because what? is energy really? It's not really mass. It's not really directly related to mass. It's really uh, force is actually again with the calculus <laughs> is actually the derivative of 
velocity. P is momentum, right? Mm -hmm. But this velocity is a function of time. Yes, P is momentum, yes. That's good. P divided by momentum. So it's really D dt. Yeah. And so light has momentum. And that's what allows it to give a force, which means that it must have energy, even though the units don't really make a lot of sense on it. So it's the momentum in light that allows it to exert a force and transfer energy into an object. It's a little over your head. <laughs> no. So, using both the conservation of momentum and energy, you can describe any system. So, on page 277, they have a, a, a demonstration of similar balls. Yeah, similar balls, right? Oh, those, yeah. Yep, yep. It's just a drawing, but it's not that all that great. No, it's not as good as watching it, right? Yeah. So if I double the momentum here, two. both, yeah, two will go on both sides. Take three. If I triple it, what will happen? All of them will leave except the one. Yes. So the momentum at the beginning must be the same at the end. So that's where you get that weird, like, balls teleporting thing going on. <laughs> it does look kind of weird. What's that? It does look kind of weird, because like the one ball in the end is just like, gets hit, goes back, stays still, and then it waits for the next hit. Right, so that lead ball never actually stops swinging. Until he just goes. And which is what they demonstrate in the third picture. So, did you ever wonder? Nope. <laughs> so now let's kind of put these ideas together. Okay. We have, let's see if I can draw it. Stare. Mm, I don't know if that's a stare. Nope, car. Yeah, we got a little car. Well, at least it's recognizable. <laughs> He's sitting. Where's the front? Where's the back? Well, obviously that's the front. Okay. It looks more like a truck, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should. Uh, He's the sitting back. at the top of a hill. Exactly. They took the. Oh, we're gonna just do this concept, so we're not gonna do any math. What? Just yet. <laughs> oh, man. So he's not moving. So, relative to the bottom of the hill here, he has what? Give yourself some scaffolding. He has how much energy? Zero. So, total energy equals. MC squared. Equals. The kinetic energy plus the potential. The potential. Yeah, right now okay. he has just. Is, is he moving? No. Yes. So does he have any kinetic energy? No. Alright. How about potential, potential energy? What's the equation for that? D e equals mk squared. No. Potential okay. energy. What's the equation for potential energy? Uh, oh, you remember? Distance. Mass uh, times. I remember this one. Yeah, you remember? You said you were going to remember it. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't remember it. Oh, yeah. Is it the max one? Yeah, it's the max one. Yes. But, but then for gravitational, what does it become instead of max? MGH. Um, yes, MGH. And Joel isn't, that, isn't smart, he just looked it up. Of course not. <laughs> MGH. What does that stand for? The mass okay, yeah. times yeah. the acceleration due to gravity okay. and the height. times the height. Okay. I knew it had to do okay, something. Okay, so max, M-A-X, is just X represents any direction. Yep. A is any acceleration. And M is mass. Ma M is yeah. mass. So max is more uh, general. General. That's general. more general. This only, MGH only refers... Refers to gravitational potential energy. I'm pretty sure Isaac Newton figured that out too. <laughs> yes, he did. This is all Newton's laws. Of course it is. One person who He's the one who had the apple fall on his head. Yeah, yeah. 
or so they said. So the total kinetic energy, uh, total energy is just mgh, right? <coughs> if you got zero kinetic. Now what happens if it starts to move? It starts gaining energy. What happens to the potential energy? If it's going backwards, it's going to be fine. Yeah, it's going to go. So, so a little gremlin comes along and he gives it a little push, and it's it's in neutral, so it's got no way no brakes are on. It just happens to be on a flat spot, but a little push, and and now this wheel is starting on, is moved over here and it's starting to get pulled down the hill by gravity. And what happens? To kinetic energy. It goes up. Increasing. And up. Okay, it goes, yeah. it's zero it's, right now, but kinetic. once it starts to move, it has some kinetic energy, right? Yeah, it increases. It eventually takes the Yes. So now this is not zero, it's still e-kinetic, we don't know how fast it is, unless we give it a speed. Yeah. So unless we put numbers in, and what about this? What about MGH, what happens to that? It decreases the potential. Does the mass change? No. How about yeah. acceleration due to gravity? Yeah, uh, that increases. That does? Acceleration. No. no. It's a constant. It's the height that changes. Yeah, it's the height. So now we have H1. This is H0. Yeah. When you hear me say not, I just make a little circle as a subscript just to designate a variable. So on page 276, they go through a nice little, they have a nice little graph. This is a different, the null potential on that one, that's a different story. But at what point does E kinetic get maximum? When it's at the bottom. When it's at the bottom, right? And what does H do at that point? It's at, well, it's at its maximum pretty much. No, no, H? Zero. H1 is less than... H not. Well then you should so say H, H at the, in the first equation should be the highest. And then yes, H is here. This is H here. This is H yes, not right that's up the here. Highest. Yes. Then why do you say it goes up as it goes down? I mean the subscript goes up as it goes down. Yeah, sorry. It subscript. doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, we can it's designate thing any way we want. You could say this. I could have put my coordinate system up here. And then I, uh, then I would have had, but I still want to just say, whatever. Sometime later, so sometime in the future, your height is zero. H1. Your height so, is what zero. is the height at? Zero. Zero. And so, what does this term become? Zero. At the bottom, this just goes to zero. So, E total equals EK. Equals E <laughs> K. You're Here, right. Which your... equals one half M <laughs> B squared. T O T A T. <laughs> you did that on the other one too. <laughs> Gretchen, don't be so confused. <laughs> I did that on this one too, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed it now, really. Okay. Anyways, I'm not one for So now let's look at another possible. This is what we're going to do on Thursday. And if we have time, I have, if I have time, I should say, to write up a lab, we're going to do an, an actual experiment after we, in the morning after we fill out the. Your little application. So application. now we got a little car coming along, little sheet. Little what? Oh, you're, you're just going to it's apply the ideas to real problems. It's a strange looking truck. <laughs> no, that's a very old car. It's one Quella DeVille drives. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you but, but should drive it backwards, okay? What a little well, she would do that. <laughs> she would. Yeah, she would. Fifth so the car's power. going that way, and he's moving now at some speed. So one half mv squared. So we could give the car some mass, and we could give it some velocity. So let's do that. Let's actually calculate <laughs> something. Okay, so its car's mass is going to be... So let's say the car weighs 2,000 kilograms. Just say two tons. It makes it so much easier, two tons. It's a very big car. Yes, yeah. it's a big car. Okay. Definitely not like the plastic forms nowadays. <laughs> and the, the velocity, let's do multiple the velocities. This is a constant, right? So we don't need to worry about that. So let's say the car at first he's going sixty, and then he comes to a stop sign. So let's yeah. let, let's do increments yeah, so from going backwards. He comes to a stop sign. Let's do meters per second. So let's say one one meter per second. How about 60. 
five meters per second. Ten meters per second. Kind of reminds me of Herbie Goes Wild. Driving back. Twenty the road. meters per second. And Herbie's open. We sure we want this guy going twenty meters per second. Is this a plane? what? Is it what? It is a plane. Twenty meters, thirty meters per second. It's pretty yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> Backwards. <too. laughs> That's okay. So, how much energy does this car have? Quite a bit. <sighs> Times. So that's kilograms, right? Yeah. Times one meter per second squared. One thousand. That e equals over second squared. Equals e kinetic, right? Yeah. But e kinetic equals one thousand joules. Yeah. That is what those units are. You know what yeah. the units are, but the symbol for energy is joules. So it has one thousand joules of energy at one meter per second. Now we could take the time and convert that into miles per hour if you like. One meters per second is pretty fast. Right. Well, then again, maybe it's not that fast. Where is it called? I mean, one second is like one. Right, right, right. That's not, that's probably like 60, 55 minutes. What if we wanted to know how long it would take to stop that? Um, sure, you can figure that out. We could figure it out. We won't. You mean how much? Well, you just have to make it so it decreases. Right, but you so have to put an acceleration in, and you're not really ready to deal with all that. Oh, you mean the time that I'm it would take? I'm ready to deal with this. Okay. So, what about if it's five? <laughs> five? Five? It's going to be something else. Joules. Five times, yes, then it's 5,000 joules. Julie, you're so smart. No, See I how? It yeah, it's really easy because the two smart. cancel. I picked two thousand for a reason. Oh Cancel's come on! Really nice. so it goes up to five thousand. Well, let me get the next one. It's gonna be ten thousand. So what happened? <laughs> I increased the speed. Uh oh, is it five thousand? No, no, it's not five thousand. No, <laughs> Why nice. not? Because it's five squared. That's square two. Okay. Yeah, so it goes, I'm I increased the speed down. by five, and it went up to 25,000 joules. So the next one's going to be 100,000. <gasps> no, yeah. So the next. No, yeah. So here I increased it by five, and it went up by 25. And it's No, it went by 24. Good It went up by... Enough joules. It went up 25 times. Yeah. Right? <laughs> big joules. So, the, well, so big you joules. see how, and what what would be the momentum? Who's it going to be? Remember what the momentum? We can do the momentum now, too. Oh, my goodness, we can. Yes. I don't like I want to, but. <laughs> so, what's the momentum? You know the velocity? Times the mass. So, momentum, let's put these here. E, kinetic. kinetic. Momentum you you equals doing? mv. Yeah. So, it's just the mass times the velocity. So 2,000 times 250,000. And momentum doesn't have special units. 50 million joules per second. So it becomes what? 20, 200,000, 2,000. No, let's do this first 2,000. It's 2,000. Yes, it's just 2,000. Plainly and... But 2,000 what? 2,000 kilograms? For a second. Meters over seconds. Cool. There's no special units for one. We don't that's have special good. momentum units. So we have to write kilograms, meters per second. Yeah, that's why we use the metric system. Okay, and what is P? Jelly beans. For this one? 50,000. 50,000? No. 10,000. Five maybe. times two, that's oh, 10,000. <laughs> Aim a little too high, Molly. Kilograms, <laughs> meters per second. So it takes a lot. It, it, the momentum went up by five times. Yes, it's it linear. Mm -hmm. The momentum goes up linearly, but the energy goes up like velocity squared. To the roof. 
Yes. So we won't do all of these. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> well, what, about, what, what would be the energy at 30 meters per second then? Nine. We know that the, the momentum is going to be 30,000 kilograms per second, right? 900 billion. 900 billion. Or is it 900 million? One of those two. So 30 squared. 30 squared? Yes. That would be the answer. So for any, well, the, the thing I'm trying to communicate to you. Yes. Is wow. that. 180,000. 180,000, that's the energy? 180,000? Right? Yes, because here we doubled it again, but then we didn't double it. We only went up by a third. That's good. Okay, so 180,000 joules. But what I'm trying to show you is that as your speed goes up for any mass, no matter what the mass is, the energy goes up like the speed squared. So a factor of four times. Very fast. Well, yeah. I'm flabbergasted. You're flabbergasted. So that's why the faster something is moving, the harder it is to stop. Because yep. so, you have to use the same amount of force. Momentum, yes, whatever. yes. So, wow. What about a bullet? Well, they say you can stop a bullet with your teeth. Myth What's that? Is, they say a, you can stop a bullet with your teeth. Myth no, you have cannot. Tried that. <laughs> no, no, you can't. It depends. Well, the let's find it. out. Let's find out. Let's find out. <laughs> Huh? Sorry, Maybe if you're Superman, he stops it with his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All he has to do is get in the way and he okay, stops it. Okay, so let's say we have a bullet <laughs> yeah, it's that weighs one-tenth of a gram. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, which is approximately what a bullet weighs. Mm, one-tenth of a gram. I have a very good question. Yeah. A very prominent yeah. question. Prevalent, relevant yeah. Yeah, question. Not very heavy. Well, we get one gram. Make it one gram. Yes? May I use the restroom? Okay. Can't you wait toward it? You only have 15 minutes. 15 minutes? No. Hey, are you a little boy? <laughs> <laughs> what does that equal in kilograms? <laughs> what is one gram in kilograms? One kilogram in kilograms. One gram. Wait, Molly. It's like 0 0.001. 0 0.001 kilograms. Okay, right? I did my part. May I go? So how. <laughs> So, <laughs> make it quick, John. Okay, I'll try. Girl. <laughs> okay, now what about velocity? What should we put? How fast? This is about 3,000 miles per hour, that's all I can think of. What? <laughs> for a, for a good gun, yeah, it's about what they go. Three thousand miles an hour, but we need to be, convert that into. If it up, well, of course, not gonna stay there for an hour. No, no, it doesn't stay. Shoot it around the world. But when it's someone in Kansas, how how do we convert that to meters per second? So we have joules. Meters per second. Yes. Oh, did you? Virtual, that's miles, not meters. Yeah, this is miles per hour. So mi miles over hours. But the symbol for miles per hour is MPH. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we usually write it that way, but we can write it that way, miles over hours. We need to convert this to meters per second. What do we do? Remember? So let's do some unit analysis. Great. You can use a refresher course in that. And, and and you're gonna need to be able to do this for these. If we know what miles to meters it was. Yeah, we don't really know miles to meters. We know miles hours to second. How many feet? Do you know how many feet are in the water? Five hundred. Five hundred. Yep, two thousand five hundred. Whoa. Yeah, two thousand five hundred and eighty. Feet over one mile times 
How many inches in a mile, in a foot? So twelve. I need some space here. Twelve inches. Inches in one foot. All right. So how many inches in in a centimeter? How about a meter? Uh, it's harder in a meter. I know the one for centimeter. I know. What is it? It was. This is a long number? Well, no, not really. So 2.54 centimeters in one inch. Oh, goodness, what you do? Times. What? One centimeter. No, what? Yeah. Oh, I see what you're putting. 100 yeah. centimeters. One yeah, one meter equals 100 centimeters. What you do to the simple one? <laughs> we got 3,000 miles an hour. That's how yeah. fast the bullet goes, roughly. That, well, okay. Okay, but I don't know that in meters per second. So uh -huh. we're going to find out what it is in meters per second. All right, let's keep moving. I ran our room over there, so we'll come over here. No, you can. So just... now I got <laughs> that converted to meters per hour, right? I've seen the board fuller before you move. Are you sure? Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's right. So I the more flux so meters and hours. Right. So now we got to fix hours. So one hour over sixty minutes. So we got to multiply all that by one hour over sixty minutes, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And then we got. It really does, actually. One minute. Over 60 seconds. Over 60 seconds. Holy cow. Wow. Alright, and that will give us our answer. So let's make sure everything cancels. The miles go away. The feet go away. The inches go away. Centimeters go away. Meters don't. Okay. Meters and hours. Large number. Well. And the minutes wow. go away. So we got seconds left and meters. Well, meters per second. Oh, it looks like a K by that one over there on the right. Okay, what's 60 times 60? Meters and seconds. Okay. What's up? What's 60 times 60? Uh, oh, you're going to calculate it. Later. We're not going to we're gonna use our calculators. Handy dandy five. calculator. Yeah, so 3,000 times 2580. That's a big number, right? Times 12 times 12 equals 2, 3, 5, 9, 5, 2, 5, 4. Divided by 100. Divided by 100. Divided by 120. No. No. Divided by 60. Divided by 60. Why does it feel so cold? Oh, okay. Well, what do we have? So what was it? Too big. So, whoop. Big enough? We're out of room on that board, right? So we're going to get... 655.32 meters per second. <laughs> We're out of room on that board. <laughs> you have enough room to write that at least. Uh, I wanted it to be linear. I see. <laughs> okay, so now we can calculate the energy, right? We got something to work with. Oh. So we got one half, so the energy of the bullet, kinetic energy. Equals one half times point zero zero one kilograms times six fifty five point three two ms meters per second oh, squared. I see now, I see. So now we just have to square the what you want to call it and multiply it times that times uh, divided by that. Oh, yeah. shoot. Which Go ahead, guys. You can do it in your calculators. I don't have one. Here. Mine's at home, I think. Equals 214.7 joules. Wow. Okay. That's not as much as that truck. No, it's not, is it? But but the, does that make sense? If you sh if you have a car coming towards you and you shoot your gun at it, it is it going to stop. stop the truck? No. Even if he doesn't have his foot on the gas. And 
how many bullets would you have to well, fire have to at say. a truck that's worth moving 30 meters per second? It depends where you hit it. 180,000 divided by that, how many bullets would it have to hit? Would have to hit it to dissipate to stop the truck. Just so we have 180,000 or a grenade or something. Divided by that answer, you would have to shoot 838 8. bullets to impart point four. Point four bullets, yeah. So, <laughs> so to actually stop it, since you can't fire point four bullets, you need 839 bullets with that much energy to stop the truck. In other words, take the cannon. <laughs> Can. So you would have to have a pretty long clip now on your gun, and it would have to fire pretty fast. Forget about fast. Do it all at once. Like have a whole bunch of guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it would no. take a lot of guys. We should do thirty-nine guys sitting on the road shooting. You should figure out a grenade. That would be a good one. Yeah. Well, yeah, how about how about we say the truck a little bit? How fast would you have to be moving to have this much energy? Faster than a lot of us. It's fast. Huh? How fast would you have to be moving? Um, so now we have the energy, right? So we have E kinetic okay, equals 214.7 equals, equals one half, and your mass is about 60 kilograms. For me, it would be about 75, 80, but you guys are lighter than me. So we'll, we'll say about 60 kilograms. 60 kilograms, it makes you sound so skinny, you know? Huh? <laughs> you said like 100 kilograms. <laughs> I'm only 60 kilograms. <laughs> yeah. We could convert from pounds, but we won't. No, that's not. Okay, <laughs> and then we got velocity squared, and that's what we want to know, right? Yep. So, what does that equal? Well, we know this is just going to convert to, we can just... Erase this and change it to 30 kilograms, right? Yeah. Because the two doesn't have units. So 214.7 divided by 30. Wait, wasn't this the velocity of that Coelho de Ville car? Wasn't what the velocity? Isn't the 30 squared? Wasn't this the whole? No, the 30 isn't squared. That's math. It's velocity that's squared. That's what we're gonna find out. Okay, that's the energy of the bullet, but that's the energy of the bullet. If you had that much energy, how fast would you have to be moving? Seven point one six. Oh, that's what this into that is? Yeah. Okay. Seven point, remember this is in joules. Point one six. Now it's joules over kilograms. And what are the units on joules? It's kilograms meter squared over second squared. So that is equal to what? Just meters squared over seconds squared, right? equals the velocity squared. Now, does that make sense? The units match? Units on velocity are meters yeah. over seconds. Yeah. And if you square those units, you get meters squared over seconds squared? Yep. Yeah, I can see, so you're yeah, good. So far. She can see? Yeah, she can, luckily. Okay, so oh, now what do we do? See. How do we, we have velocity squared. We want to know velocity. Just I'll write it on that board, because she's not going to be able to see it. Remember how to take care of that? Velocity. Oh, Find the square root of it. It's yes. Two point six seven five eight one seven six three. I think that's far enough. Two. <laughs> I think that's far enough. Two. So two. Two point six eight. Six eight. Kilometers. Where do you meters per second? Yes. Two point six eight. So we got. Let's. Uh, don't go any farther to your right. <laughs> Yeah, so 2.68 meters per second. So that Corella de Ville car. So what is 2.86 meters per second? First, let's. So how much momentum would you have? Quite a bit. Why do we keep going? That's speed, right? Why do we keep going? Because he's a physicist and he likes these type of things, what do you expect? Yeah, so we want to know everything about about this system. So now you would be moving 2.8 meters per second, and we're going to convert that back to miles per hour in a second. But first, let's find our momentum. We're going to convert that back to miles per hour in a second. 
Ha ha ha. <laughs> well, you're the one that said it. 60 kilograms times 2.68 meters per second. What is it? It's converted now in this case. P equals what? 160.8. 160.8. Kilograms, meters per second. Yeah. That's your momentum. What was the momentum of our of our of our uh, bullet? It was joules, actually. Six. You never calculated the momentum of the bullet. <laughs> well, what is it? Speed. We have this, and we have the mass. That's all we need, right? Yeah, it should be. So well, six mass times fifty-five volume. point three two no times point zero zero one point six five five three. Ah, so momentum's much less for the for the bullet. for the bullet than it is for you. Yeah, but we're traveling at a okay. lot slower rate. Yes. I'm confused. Oh yeah, of course it makes sense. <laughs> well, you got the mass and the velocity difference. Right. Five. The momentum. That's not so exciting. This was the momentum kilogram. Point six five five. What? Point six five five. Three two. Yeah, it's just multiply by one. Wow. Well, it has a much smaller momentum, doesn't it? Yeah. Stop us. What's that? It can stop us. So. <laughs> it can stop you, yeah. That's how we fall to the ground. <laughs> Alright, now, what is that speed? So that the bullet has to move 3,000 miles an hour to have this much energy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, how fast are you moving if you have that much energy? 2.68. Yeah. And we gotta go back the other direction, right? No. Holy cow. So 2.68 meters per second. We wanna go back to miles per hour. Miles over hours. Equals. Don't rock the world this time. Times what? Let's change seconds to hours. So 60 seconds. Equal one hour times equals one minute. Sorry. Times sixty minutes over one hour. Right? What about meters? Well, you're in meters. Meters. We're trying to find meters. One meter equals one hundred centimeters. We have to go, we go back to miles. Yeah, we gotta go all the way back, right? Yikes. So times, let me erase this other stuff. Go ahead. Anytime. No, no, it's just erase. Okay. One, uh, 2.54 centimeters equal one inch. Right? Yeah, 12 inches over. Yep, so then it's... One foot over twelve inches. And two thousand five hundred and eight. Yep, so one mile over two thousand five hundred and eighty feet. You doing what you did over there again? Making yep. a very lengthy problem. Okay, so uh Now you're going to punch all that in. 964,800 divided by whatever the bottom is, because I can't do it. This is our science class. You already thought we were doing math. That's physics. I don't mind physics. <laughs> it's just the math part of it I don't like. Alright, so that's 
12.26 miles per hour. Wow. So you would have to be one of the fastest runners in the world to run that fast. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> can you run that fast? Not for very long. <laughs> well, you can run that fast, but, but we, not when you long. run that fast, so that's not un not that. It's not impossible to run that fast. That's only twelve. No, it's not. So that's impossible. really running hard, though. Yeah. That's how fast you'd have to run to have as much energy as a bullet moving 3,000 miles an hour. I can do that. <laughs> no, 12 miles an hour is not that bad. Not that bad? I sprinted 18, long. but it was downhill. There was a cop thing. <laughs> Just clocking cars, you know? Yeah. We're like, I wonder if it can catch us. Sure enough, he caught us, and so we started running to see who could do the fastest. <laughs> 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 it was fun. Yeah. Are we done with science class then? Yeah, well, we're pretty much done. So, on Thursday, we're going to do the application in the morning. Hopefully we finish. And hopefully I have time to do a formal write-up so that we have more to do in the afternoon. If not, if I don't get time, we will do the review in the afternoon. And I guess it's pretty good out of the way. Yes, otherwise she will kick you out of the way. Goodbye, guys.